Hello and good afternoon from South Cambridge here in the United Kingdom. Today I've got a solar update, a winter solar update if you like. It's still a tiny bit snowy outside. It's just starting to thaw. It's 17th of December. We've had a very dark November, snowy December, which is a bit unusual for us. And one of the questions I had before I got solar was how does solar run whenever we have dark days and snow? which, as I say, I'm glad I could test it. So in this video, I'm going to cover the costs, how things have looked on the graphs, and why I think it's so important to have a battery as well as solar. So let's jump into it. Well, this is a really good example to start with. You have the 12th of December, and that's when we had a lot of snow. We don't often get snow in South Cambridge, but... We had, we had, we had, the, we had, when I say a lot, gosh, if anybody's watching this from America, you're going you're gonna to laugh at this, but it was, yeah, there was, there was a bit, you, you'll see from the images, there was a, enough to cover the solar panels anyway. This day is a good example of when you cannot get any light whatsoever. Uh, I'm surprised we even got 11 watts there. I don't quite understand how. The battery charged as it would do usually overnight during the winter. This is the important part of having the battery, in my opinion. It makes the system, well, more cost-effective through the winter period. You have the charge there overnight. Then throughout the day, you dip into the battery. Peak times when you're doing breakfast or whatever, you're pulling a bit off the grid as well. There's a little lull during the afternoon. And you can see our rough usage is maybe 200, 300 watts or something there or thereabouts. And then once evening time comes in, your battery's lost. It's all, all it's charged. So all that charge from overnight, used through the day, and it's gone by, well, before dinner time, which is a bit of a shame. You have a quite a big usage there. That would be cooking. We've got an induction hob, so it pulls massive amount of electricity and then back down towards the charge the following day. Of course, the snow stayed, uh, and then you have this period where it charges again overnight. This is on the 13th, battery in the morning, and the panels, I think, start to clear a little bit. Tiny bit of solar coming in, uh, maybe two, two kilowatts. That's not bad for the day, really. So there must have been a, a little bit of the panels exposed. And then back into your battery being dead here by tea time. And as I said, it'll sit idle at 4% until it's ready to charge again or it gets sunlight. So these are the more extreme examples of solar and probably the worst days that we're going to have. Now, in terms of costs for this or days like this, how much roughly do they cost? Well, I haven't been billed for it yet. But what you can see is I've used electricity here, which is at the seven and a half p and then this is all at 40 p so anything that goes up to one on this side of the scale it's just slightly over maybe maybe that's a kilowatt there oh it's not even a kilowatt so it's 0 0.95 of a kilowatt but that would be roughly 40 p for that one kilowatt now stretching that out over those well a few hours in the evening i guess that's probably about four or five pounds uh, and then you've got your seven and a half p over the night, so maybe 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 six pounds. So that was that that was a very expensive day. Oh gosh, yeah. Well, that was slightly more expensive. So and also there's quite a, there's a bigger charge here overnight as well. I don't quite let me just check that. Oh gosh, yeah. Okay, so didn't didn't realize that the thirteenth is a more expensive day. So that could have been seven or eight pounds, and that's without next to no daylight. Less than three kilowatts the, the 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 whole time, and a total consumption of fifty. It would have been the twelfth and thirteenth of December. They are fairly unique, and very rarely will we face that here in terms of complete snow coverage and not getting any solar in. So I'll give you an idea then in terms of a dark month. This year, November, October to November was particularly dark. For us, I'll give you the date ranges of my last billing period, which are from the 19th of October to the 18th of November. You'll see there my total consumption is 645 
well, 646 kilowatts. So that would have cost me roughly, real terms, about 270 pounds. So the monthly bill for that would have been 270 quid. And here is the actual bill with solar and a battery system. So it's 59 pounds and 19 pence. Now, considering I think November and December are going to be the two most expensive months by far, especially because of the days that we covered earlier on, the 7.5p charge overnight, which I've taken a massive lump off the grid, 378 kilowatts, it's only cost me 27 pounds. And that's helped me save massively on the bill during those dark days. Something I have learned since having solar installed is that we all use electricity differently. It's probably worth upgrading your appliances if you can afford to do so to lower consumption appliances. I spoke before in a previous episode about doing my tumble dryer and washing machine and fridge. Fridge broke during the 40 degree weather and the other things, well, they were old and they were consuming loads of electricity. But we're all different and haven't spoken to some friends who have had solar installed as well. And this, don't get me wrong, we don't talk about solar all the time, but it is interesting to see how we all use electricity differently and how we use our appliances differently at different times of the day. So if this is something that you're considering, there's no given answer. It's how you use appliances and whether you use them together or not. For example, if you were to use, I don't know, a coffee machine and you have an induction hob, well, if you switch them both on at the same time, your inverter can only supply 2.6 to 2.8 kilowatt hours, and then you're going to pull off the grid. So you, although your battery might be fully charged, you're still limited by that kilowatt usage at any one time. And that brings me on to my next point. I'm so tempted to get another 10 panels, another battery and another inverter, because at the minute, there's no way that I can run two inverters side by side on the same system, which is quite unfortunate because I'd love to be in a position where I'm not pulling anything off the grid. And actually with the volume of solar panels that we have, that's that's really possible. So watch this space, see if I upgrade that further in the future. And of course I will let you know how it goes. So hopefully that was useful and you got a bit of an insight into how solar works in the south of the UK on these darker months. It's definitely more cost effective than not having it by a long stretch. I guess the issue is if you haven't got solar yet, it's it's very, very difficult to get at the minute. The the inverters, batteries, you know, I, I love my give energy stuff. Uh, they're like uh, unicorn poop, very, very hard to find. But if you do manage to get a system, they're brilliant and it is totally, totally worthwhile. So have a Merry Christmas. And if you haven't checked out my little Christmas video I did a couple of days, well, yesterday, please do check it out. It's a bit of a feel good thing about, are you ever too old for snow? Whatever you do for the rest of the day, have a good one and I will catch you later. Mm -hmm.